This is our third lesson on unemployment. In our previous two lessons, we've talked about the definitions of the three different types of unemployment, how to calculate the unemployment rate. We've also talked about some of the causes of frictional, structural, and cyclical unemployment, and we've learned how to illustrate the different types of unemployment using an ADAS diagram. In this final lesson, we're going to talk about two more things. We're going to talk about some of the consequences of unemployment, and the solutions to the different types of unemployment that a nation may face and how government or policymakers can go about reducing the nation's unemployment rate. Looking back at a graph, we can see that when an economy is producing at its full employment level of YFE, the economy is experiencing its natural rate of unemployment. This includes structural and frictional unemployment. If, however, an economy experiences a recession and aggregate demand falls, causing output to fall, unemployment rises and a nation experiences cyclical unemployment. The most desirable unemployment rate for a nation is therefore its natural rate of unemployment. And if there is any cyclical unemployment in the economy, the economy is considered to be unhealthy, experiencing a recession or a contraction in its business cycle. So when we talk about the consequences of unemployment, what we are really looking at is cyclical unemployment. If an economy is experiencing cyclical unemployment, this means there is weak aggregate demand, recession, in other words, falling output, and falling incomes. The existence of cyclical unemployment can therefore lead to several undesirable consequences, including a recessionary gap and possibly a deflationary spiral. What is a deflationary spiral? This refers to a situation in which falling incomes from rising unemployment lead to less consumption and even more unemployment. A deflationary spiral is one of the worst case scenarios an economy can experience and the existence of high levels of cyclical unemployment are likely to lead to such a dire situation. Another additional consequence of high levels of cyclical unemployment is downward pressure on wages. Now you may recall from earlier lessons that if wages fall during a recession, this actually might lead to the self-correction of the economy as firms employ more workers. However, falling wages apply not only to those who are out of work, but to those who are in work as well. So even among those who are employed, high unemployment can lead to lower wages. There is excess supply of labor in the labor market the only way to relieve this surplus of labor is for the wage rate to fall. Now, for those people who still have jobs, this means that when their contracts are renegotiated, employers are able to lower their wages, or for those who refuse to accept lower wages, the threat of losing their jobs becomes real. So cyclical employment has several negative consequences on the economy. These are just some of the economic consequences. What about the social consequences? Of course, there are many studies that show that more unemployment leads to higher crime rates, more poverty, and perhaps mental or psychological problems such as depression. However, this is an economics class. While we do identify these social consequences, our main focus is clearly on the economic consequences. So looking back at our graph, we can actually illustrate some of these economic consequences. When aggregate demand falls, the level of unemployment rises to a level above the natural rate. This causes incomes to fall. So as incomes fall, this leads to less consumption, which could lead to even less aggregate demand. So the deflationary spiral we're talking about could be illustrated by a further decrease in aggregate demand to AD2 and an even further increase in the unemployment rate. This is what causes what we call depressions or deep recessions. Incomes are falling due to rising unemployment causing aggregate demand to fall even further. The economy becomes increasingly worse off. What about the downward pressure on wages? When unemployment persists for a long time, workers who are out of work start to accept lower wages. This causes aggregate supply to increase in the long run. As firms are able to hire those workers back, we start to move along are now lower level of aggregate demand. So this could lead to a self-correction in the economy, but furthermore, it leads to lower incomes for those workers who are still employed. So this downward pressure on wages and the deflation 
caused by high unemployment could be considered one of the economic consequences of the existence of high levels of unemployment. Let's talk briefly about structural unemployment. What is the consequence of becoming structurally unemployed? We learned in our earlier lesson that structural unemployment refers to workers whose skills are no longer required because of a change in the structure of the economy. So inability to find work with an individual's current skills. How does this look for somebody who is structurally unemployed? It means they need to get re-educated or learn new skills. Sounds simple, right? Well, it might not be so simple. For example, if globalization is occurring, entire swaths of the population that were previously employed in manufacturing may be out of work, and getting retrained in higher tech manufacturing or in the service sector might not be something that is easily achieved. So there are several economic and social consequences of structural unemployment that are clearly undesirable for the economy. However, I'll just remind you that the existence of structural unemployment is considered natural, and it is not necessarily a sign of an unhealthy economy. However, the existence of structural unemployment, I should say high levels of structural unemployment, might be evidence of a failure of the nation's education system at training workers for relevant jobs in the modern economy. Cyclical and structural unemployment, both difficult for those who are experiencing it. One is particularly bad for the economy as a whole, but both have consequences both on the individual, economic, and social level. So what are some ways that a government or policymakers can try to reduce the different types of unemployment in the economy? Let's we'll start with frictional, actually. This is a natural type of unemployment resulting from people being in between jobs or people entering the workforce for the first time. High frictional unemployment might be evidence of inefficient labor markets or the inability for workers to find employers. So things like employment agencies or websites where jobs are posted and people looking for those jobs can easily apply. So this is fairly straightforward here. Frictional unemployment means people are having a hard time finding the right job but it doesn't mean that people don't have the right skills. So there's no need necessarily to train people or to give them better educations. Rather, we just need to make it easier for people to find those firms that are looking for skilled workers. Structural unemployment, a little bit tougher. We talked about the need for an improved education system that trains people for the jobs that actually exist in the economy, not those that may have existed in previous decades or in generations. Job training centers. These things are both what we call supply side policies, which increase the productivity of labor in the economy and make employing workers more attractive because they have better skills. There are also some demand side policies such as protectionism. This means taxes on imports. Taxing imports could increase demand for domestically produced manufactured goods and thereby create more jobs in the manufacturing sector that might otherwise have been lost. So structural unemployment basically involves training workers for the jobs that exist in the economy today or trying to protect those jobs using things such as import quotas or import tariffs, taxes on foreign goods to make sure domestic consumers buy more goods from domestic firms. Finally, cyclical unemployment. We know that cyclical unemployment arises because of a fall in aggregate demand which means cyclical unemployment can be addressed through what we call demand side policies. All right, any policies a government or a central bank can enact to increase aggregate demand, such as lower taxes on households or firms, increased government spending, lower interest rates, which would lead to more consumption and more investment, perhaps even currency depreciation or devaluation. What this means is if a government or central bank were to intervene in the market for its currency on the foreign exchange market, make it weaker, this would increase, increase net exports and create more jobs. So these policies could increase AD and close, I'm going to put this in quotation marks here, close the recessionary gap, reducing cyclical unemployment. 
So in this lesson, we have talked about some of the consequences of unemployment. Cyclical unemployment, which leads to recessionary gaps and possibly a deflationary spiral and downward pressure on wages, even for those who are still employed, could lead to higher crime, more poverty, depression. These are some of the social consequences. Structural unemployment is the inability to find work when an individual's skills no longer match what the economy is producing. So structural unemployment has several social and economic consequences as well. And having a very high structural unemployment rate is definitely not desirable for a country. It's evidence of a failing education system and a struggling economy. The solutions ranging from increasing the efficiency of labor markets, making it easier for job seekers to find employers, structural unemployment, improving the education system, providing more job training opportunities, these are called supply side policies, or using protectionism to reduce the demand for imports and make sure that consumption of domestically produced goods is higher to protect jobs in manufacturing industries. Finally, cyclical unemployment arising from weak aggregate demand can be addressed through demand side policies. These are things such as tax cuts, increased government spending, lower interest rates, weakening the currency, anything to increase the components of aggregate demand, consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. Here we go. One step.